everyone, I'm Kim Trathen, business and marketing coach, and this is episode 21, I believe, of Girls Talk Business. So I'm really excited to have my guest on today. My guest is Samantha St. Marie. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. And she actually helps businesses and individuals with writing content. Um, hi, Bree. I see you're on. So I'm just waiting a minute for Samantha to join me. Samantha, if you are watching right now, go ahead and drop a comment so that I know when you are on the live. Um, I'm really excited to have her on today. She was actually unexpectedly let go from her job. Um, I'll let her talk more about that. I think though it was I think it was this year in 2018. And she went home and, you know, a lot of people might need some time to kind of lick their wounds after being let go and reassess. Um, but Samantha had several clients booked for her business within like three hours of being let go. Hey Sam, all right, I'm gonna bring Samantha on screen. All right. Um, Samantha, I'm not, it's not letting me add you. Oh, here we go. I've had that issue times. Um, so Samantha, you should have a notification on your end saying that I'm trying to bring you on camera. Just go ahead and accept that. And then it should show us, it looks like it's adding you and you should be on with internet magic with me here shortly. Um, let's see, we should have her on in a minute. Oh, okay. hello. There. Hi, okay, hold on. I'm like trying to get myself organized here. Oh no, that's, that's this, okay. <laughs> let's, let's try this a little bit differently, okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I'm so excited to Good. have you on today and chat with you. Oh, I'm excited too. Yay. So I was Good. just okay. giving the viewers a little bit of a background. Um, told them that you help with content, with writing content and ghostwriting things. Um, before we jump into that, though, anybody who's watching, please drop in the comments where you're watching from. Let us know. It's super fun to see. We've had all parts of the world join in for Girls Talk Business. So it's super fun to see where people are watching from. Or if you catch the replay, drop a comment that you're watching the replay and let us know where you catch the replay from. Um, if you haven't watched before, I'm in Michigan. Sam, where are you located? I'm in Ottawa, Canada. So oh. the lovely capital where there's a ton of snow happening right now. So we are actually getting great. snow now too. Um, oh. Right this minute it's not snowing here, but this was our first day of snow. Um, oh, we've had, we've had a few, but that's, that's yeah. pretty normal here. So yeah. <laughs> well, wonderful. I can add you list, to my list of my favorite Canadians then. I didn't know that's where oh. you were located. <laughs> yes. You made, the cut. Canada. you made the Yay. cut. Yay. Yay. Yes. Oh, good. Oh. Gia's on. Thank you, Gia. Gia was actually my guest on my show last week, and she's so wonderful at coming on and supporting Girls Talk Business. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, perfect. So good. I'm excited to have you on. Can you start out by just letting everybody know about your business, Red Rock Content? I always want to say Red Rock Canyon every time I look at your business <laughs> name, so I hope I don't have that slip up. Red Rock well, content. Can you talk about your business and tell people you have really interesting because you help people with a few different things in regards mm -hmm. to content and writing. So can you talk a bit about that first? Yeah, absolutely. So my company, like you said, offers a, a bunch of different things depending on, you know, at what stage in your business you are at. So for example, um, we do offer 360 marketing services so people can, you know, have us retained for you know, every month. And we basically handle everything from social media to writing blog content to running advertising because a lot of one man shows just don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. But also there are people who are much further along in their business and they want to uh, write a book, for example, and basically use that to replace their business cards. So if they go to conferences and things like that, they can actually just hand those out to prospects. And Again, we also do just one-offs. So companies might just want us to handle social media and then they might want us to handle their advertising. So we are kind of a 360, but we customize everything to wherever you are in terms of you know, your business growth, if you will. And do you have a team of people that work with you now or are you, do you handle everything? I handle the majority of stuff, but I do have some people that I outsource to as well. Um, so I have people that I work with regularly. Um, for example, I have a company who is local here that does all of the web developing for all of my clients, but okay. I am ultimately the person that 
handles all of that. So it's not mm -hmm. like they then have to go and work with this other company. They just work with me directly and I will handle all that for them. But yeah. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So do you do a lot of like website coffee then too? You do that piece of it also? I do. Yes, I do. So again, depending on what you're looking for, a lot of people do complete website revamps or if you're building a sales page or something like that. I actually just did one today. Um, you know, somebody has an online course that's being released. So there was an entire sales page that needed to be reviewed and everything. So yes, there's a lot of web copy as well. Awesome. So let's take it back a few years before, Ooh. before you dove into this. Cause I think you, this was originally a, like a side hustle for you, right? Or a part-time job that you were doing while you were employed. Yes. Yes. So exactly. what? What drove you to originally even start this as your side hustle? So um, I went to, well, we call it university, um, but the, we have university and college, but university is our, our four-year, you know, MBA kind of thing. Okay. Um, so I got into university much later in life. So I started at 23 instead of at 18, like most people do, because I went and did something else and I was working. So when I was in university, I was at that age where I just, I didn't want to be in school anymore. I wanted to be out in the world working with people. So to kind of get me through to the end, I, st I decided to start something where I was actually working with people and learning business and things like that. Um, also, I was in an English program, so I got to actually apply what I was learning instead of just working a part-time retail job. You know, I actually wanted yeah. to take what I was learning and use it and prep myself. So that's what I started to do. And then it just kind of kept going and I kept doing it. And then, you know, here we are. So here we are. Here I'm we are. Talk business. There we go. <laughs> So, um, what was it like, because I think you said in your application that like your sister is an entrepreneur and was it your dad? Was your dad an yes. entrepreneur? Yes. So you kind of already had some of that. You were surrounded with the entrepreneurial spirit, shall mm -hmm. we say. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think that influenced you even taking that road at kind of a younger age while you were working on, you know, when you were in university, taking that road as opposed to getting a waitressing job or a retail job? Do you think that influenced you? I think more so my sister. Yes. So, um, just because she is more of on the creative side of things. So, um, my dad just, he ran, um, a taxi company. So he had, he, he founded that and ran that. And so I got to watch him do all of the kind of the team management and, and mm -hmm. all his bookkeeping and stuff like that. Um, but it was my sister that encouraged me to um, kind of take a creative approach. And she is a, a wonderful artist. She's fantastic. And I've, you know, her and I will probably do something together down the line. You never know. But I love she, it. yeah, so she is four years younger than me. And she has had her business for quite a few years now. And she's been doing very well. So I was always envious of how she could just work from home and, you know, decide on the projects that she worked on and everything. So, you know, and then, you know, she just kept telling me, well, I mean, if I can do it, I mean, obviously you can. <laughs> so, um, she's one of those people with self-deprecating humor. So, um, <laughs> yes. I just kind of took her advice and, you know, she, I had a whole bunch of questions and she answered them for me. So it was great to have somebody to, kind of ask those questions and lean yeah. on when, you know, you're thinking, okay, maybe I'm going to take a stab at this. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Um, that's really awesome. And how fun that you can think that maybe someday you two could <laughs> do a little collaboration. Of yeah. Sorts. You never know. Cause she is the artist. So maybe she could start doing my book covers and stuff like that. Yes. You never know. Yes. Yeah. That would be cool. Yes. So now let's talk about, so you're doing this you're doing this as kind of your side gig. You, mm -hmm. I assume, finish up at university and then yes. you get a regular nine to five job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure. Did. And you loved every minute of it, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I did. I did up until the end there. So, um, yes. And I what was were you doing? Was it something that pertained to your English degree then that was where yeah. you were working? 
Yes and no. I was recruited. I, so I graduated two months later. I was recruited to this company and they are a recruiting company actually. So okay. they obviously recruit their own people. And I was brought in um, because of my English degree. They were um, creating a new role in the company that they had never had before. It was somebody that would be interviewing all of their candidates. Mm. So all these uh, people who are very high up in their companies, you know, VPs, CEOs, director level people who are making, you know, quarter of a million dollars a year. And here I am, this 26 year old who's never had a corporate job. And I was supposed to get on the phone with these people and interview them and <laughs> act like I was on the same level when I was not on the same level yeah. as them. So um, that had to be terrifying. <laughs> For the first little while, it was terrifying. Yeah. But then you kind of get into a groove and you realize they all kind of sound the same. So, you know, you just, you, 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 you adapt, you make it work. So that's what I was brought in for was because of my English degree, my communication skills, my multitasking, I guess. I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I was surprised by this. I was in that for about probably eight to 10 months. And then I was promoted onto their marketing team where I basically ran a little bit of everything, the advertising, okay. the social media. I did all of the blog content, everything like that. So I was kind of tossed in there, was self-taught for pretty much all of it. And it was sink or swim. So yeah. 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 And then during that time, um, I know in your application, you had talked about, I, now I'm trying to remember a boyfriend or husband. Were you married at that time? I, so I got that job in June and then I got married in October. So okay. yes. So I was married soon after for most of the time I was married during that. Yeah. And then your husband lost his job, correct? He did. He's in a very tough industry. He's in radio where people get laid off and let go for no reason at all, all the time. It's insane, yeah. especially because they're owned by large corporations. So, you know, it was one of those things where you walk in one morning and six people get walked out the door and he just happened to be one of wow. them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's tough. So, yeah, so That's it was, tough. I had been in this new job for two weeks, I think, two or three weeks, and he called me one morning and just said, so I lost my job, uh, and it was, it was basically, it was, it was, it was wonderful, because I had been in school for so long, and so this was the first time that we were both generating a good income. It, one of us was always part-time at that point, so it was two weeks of Yay, we're both working full time and oh now, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Sorry. Got ya. <laughs> there goes yeah. that. Yeah. And then so let's talk about the dreaded Monday morning. You show up oh, to work like yeah. everything is fine, right? Everything like you is think fine. you think everything's great. Yeah. So um I really enjoyed working for this company. You know, they kind of reminded me of Google in a sense. They were very innovative. They had that like gorgeous office that had the ping pong tables and all that oh, stuff cool. it was it was um it was a great place to work the people were fantastic obviously there were downsides but yeah so I had been part of the marketing team for quite a while and got along with everybody I'm I mean I'm sure you're the same way but I'm a very opinionated person I if I if I disagree <laughs> with an idea or if I disagree with something I'm going to yeah pitch what another idea or give my opinion or whatever it may be so there were some times where I would butt heads with my marketing lead you know because I just thought that I, I just was trying to wrap my head around so many different thought processes mm -hmm. I guess and uh, yeah, I had never been reprimanded. I had been promoted and I had won many awards in the company, been given bonuses. Like I, I, there was no reason for me to think that this would happen. Yeah. So I actually spent the weekend coming up with an entire new content strategy that I wanted to try and roll out the next week. So I walk in Monday morning. I remember putting my stuff down at my desk and my boss goes, Hey Sam, can you just jump in the conference room with me? And this was, this was normal for us to just You're like, do sure, that. We're we're like, yeah, sure. We're whatever. So I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I thought, yes, this is the, I'll just ask him if we can meet later in the afternoon. I'll give him my presentation, whatever, whatever. And so I walk into the room and I see, Oh, what I forget what her title was, but she was, 
something about keeping employees happy. She wasn't HR, but mm. she was something to that effect. So I walk in and I see her sitting there and I just went, okay, I know, uh, I know what this is. I know what this is. And the reason I knew that is because that's just unfortunately what they did. They would kind of pick you out of the office very discreetly, take you into the back room, tell you you were being let go, sneak you out the back, and you weren't even yeah. allowed to say bye to people. You couldn't grab your stuff. It was just, I, you're kind of treated like a criminal in a sense when sure, you didn't sure. really do anything wrong. So... Yeah, I remember I was leaving the building. I had taken the stairs because I didn't want to run into anybody who was coming up the elevator. And I still ran into somebody from the office. And oh. she's like the most bubbly, upbeat person. And she's so sweet. And she, you know, was saying good morning. And she looked so happy. And I had to pretend like everything was fine because I wasn't allowed to tell anybody yet. So that was, that was an hard. interesting experience. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. Um, I have I have not been let go of a job myself at this point, um, yeah. but I have talked to I know many people that have. Yeah, um, and it, I feel like a lot of times it's almost like it's almost that same type of emotional trigger. Like you just got dumped by the love of your life. Like it just it yeah it's that yeah. it triggers you and it's like that horrifying shock disbelief you know and so as I said in the the graphic that I posted, I think I put it in there. Um, a lot of people, when they get let go, like it's such a shock, which obviously it was to you too, that they need to take some time to like, okay, mm -hmm. I need to get my bearings. I need to figure out a plan. Um, you had a plan pretty much immediately. <laughs> so what did that look like? I'm assuming you call your husband, you drive home. I did. Yes. So I got in my car and I mean, Obviously, I had a little bit of a pity party in the car. I, I cried and I called yeah. him and I said, I don't know what's going on. I can't believe this is happening because at that point, he had also, this is just so, the timing is insane to me, the way the world works. <laughs> he had just gotten his first like full-time permanent job like three weeks before this happened. So again, you were like, yay, so again, we're both you're like, working. Yay, awesome. <laughs> now we can start on the road to saving for our house and all this stuff. And then yeah. the rug gets ripped out from under us again. Jeez. So maybe, maybe that's why I, I decided to do, do things this way. Um, so I got in the car. I also called my mom. Like my mom is my biggest fan. Of course. So, um, so you know, she's like, okay, I need you to go get a tea like you need to go through drive through get a tea you need a tea I just need you to go home and you should just sit there watch something funny and everything will be fine and I just oh, I remember, we love mom <laughs> yeah and I just remember driving home thinking to myself no that's not good enough I just can't I can't do that because I can't now go back to working in retail or working part-time somewhere or job hunting and you know trying to convince another company that I'm you know, what they're looking for. Yeah. So, cause I'm a big believer that it's just as much their job to convince me as a candidate to join their mm -hmm. company as it is my job to convince them to have me on as an employee. But a lot of companies don't see it that way. Yeah. So, um, I, I got home and because it was already a side hustle, I was kind of at the point where I really wanted to release it to the world that this is what I was doing, but I was, I couldn't because it was in my employee contract that I actually wasn't allowed to do any work outside of what I was doing. So oh, I okay. couldn't tell anybody, I couldn't advertise, I couldn't have it anywhere. So I just thought, okay, well, I already kind of have this going. This is now me. I'm just going to plaster it everywhere and let everybody know. So I called yes. the clients that I had. I said, listen, I'm not with my other company anymore. I'm all yours, whatever you need. And I started, you know, reaching out to a couple of people that I know um, had businesses in town. So kind of friends and different people. I basically just leveraged the network that I had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, within the first week, I was making more than I was at the company wow. that just let me go. That's amazing. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sorry, but that must have felt really damn good. <laughs> it it does. Yes. And the best part about this is well obviously is my company that I have right <laughs> but um I got messages from employees from my old company probably five or six people reached out to me and said that they were 
completely disgusted that I had been let go. And within two months of me leaving, 10 people had left that company. Holy cow. So that they speaks volumes. <laughs> yeah. And they, they just said, if you can get let go, there's no hope yeah. for me. So, I mean, and it does when things like that happen at a company, it can really eat away at the culture of the company. And mm -hmm. even if they had somehow, for some reason, they thought they were making the right choice for whatever those hidden reasons you gotta were. Do, you got to do what's right for you. But yeah, but when, when those things feel secretive and it feels unexpected to everybody, mm -hmm. it eats away. It is, it's that, you know, it could yeah. be me next. So why would exactly. somebody not start looking for different yeah. employment? Yeah. Um, but wow, what a blessing in disguise for you that I know, I know I'm, I'm so, I almost want to, there have been times where I've thought of reaching out to the two company founders and just saying, Hey, like no hard feelings. Thank you for the opportunity. I just want to say that I learned a lot, but you know, I'm, I'm doing really well. So thanks yeah. for <laughs> deciding that I wasn't the right fit anymore or that I, Oh, their reason was the company is going in a direction that they don't see me fitting into anymore. That was what they said. So that's sounds like a good line of BS. Such, right there. such a blanket statement, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. They Googled uh, that. What do we tell somebody? They, what do we tell someone when they ask us why? Well, yes. here's the yes. best one. It's basically right up there with it's not you, it's me. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh my gosh. And oh. it kind of worked out timing too. I mean, I understand why at the time it would have felt shocking, but if your husband now did have full-time employment, I'm assuming then you could yep. be on his benefits so that maybe you had that to yep. so, fall back on. I mean, he's now become a bit of an entrepreneur himself. Um, so he was working for kind of a, a medical company and he has since decided to do something else. So I guess we're both kind of weird that way, but he... <laughs> He's now a, a professional MMA fighter, actually. Oh, and wow. And he, he DJs weddings, and he's a kickboxing instructor. So he's kind of the jack of all trades. So You guys are super uh, exciting. <laughs> well, I, I really don't think we are, because date night consists of us just lounging on the couch because we're both too exhausted to do anything else. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the but, energy has been spent by the Yes, weekend. especially <laughs> him. Especially him, which is... I don't know how he does it. The polar opposite of me. I sit here at my desk all day doing things and he's out kicking and punching stuff for <laughs> everything. All hours. Yeah. So, oh, that's hilarious. I love yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about a special offer that you said you would like offers. Mm. Offers. Plural. Yes. Um, yes. That you will extend to the Girls Talk business viewers. And if you will make sure to include two, some of my guests have offers available for only a certain period of time. Some of them are indefinitely. So if you can make sure to include that also. Sure. Absolutely. So I wanted to include a couple of things because I do offer a wide variety of options. So again, for people that are maybe earlier on in their business and then for someone who's a little bit later on. So for those of you who are a little bit early on in your business, maybe you have a newer website or you're blogging regularly to try and get some traffic, whatever it may be. For the first five people that, you know, tag a friend in this video, share it with, you know, their own audience. You can um, then let me know what you would like out of these two. I can either go onto your website, do a complete audit of everything. So all of your copy, your blog, everything that's on there, just to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success, putting your best foot forward, because it could just be your button is a little bit too, too far up. And that could be why people aren't converting properly. So... If you're a little bit more early on, maybe that's something that you want. But then if you're somebody who's a little bit later on in your business and you're thinking that maybe you want to write that really influential book for your prospects or your audience, you and I can jump on, you know, a half hour call, talk about what you're thinking, and I can let you know if we can actually turn it into, you know, a bestseller, which I have done before. So those are the and two things that I would... you've worked on a few bestsellers, right? I have. Yes, I have. So That's exciting. That's... It is very exciting. So these people are, they're doing well. They're doing well. Yeah. I and lots of it. different industries too, which is my favorite part. So. so when you work with people that are writing books, is it typically mm -hmm. then, like you said, you know, a book, would it be like maybe a book on mindset? Like, is it something like that then that you typically work on that they can yeah, use for their so professional purposes? 
Exactly. So I've worked with, um, you know, sales trainers. So people that go into large companies and train sales teams, or I've worked with um, doctors, I've worked with nutritionists, I've worked with um, people in finance. There's so much, you know, a lot of what I do, though, is it's a lot of mindset stuff, how to get yourself out of this situation, how to create the life that you want, you know, how to take this and turn it into that or whatever it may be. So it is related to the business. It's kind of, you give people the skeleton of what you can offer. So that at the end of the book, they then want all of your services. Yeah. So they oh, then reach it. out to you to get that. So that's kind of the, you know, the rule of thumb for books like that. Very cool. Yeah. I love it. So everybody take advantage of this first five that tag and share get to pick out a, one of those two offers and after after our segment ends i will update the description of this video so that people can see the offers right there and know that they need to tag and share a friend um so now we are at one of my favorite parts of girls talk business which is your top two tips so let's Yay. jump in with your tip number one okay so um this is it kind of, I think it goes against what a lot of entrepreneurs think too. So this is why I like to tell people this, but if you have a business idea, whether it's product or service based, it doesn't matter. Please don't quit your day job. Please don't do that. It's just, it's not, it's not good business sense. It's, it's one of those things where you have to kind of work two jobs for the first little while. You have to build it up to something that you can be supported by after you've mm -hmm. quit the job that you no longer want to be in because realistically you're going to need money to pay your bills you're going to need money to fund this new company this new business this new product or service so if you quit your job where is that money going to come from credit cards lines of credit and you're just putting uh. yourself in a hole that is going to take so much time to get out of so i know it's very tempting to leave something maybe you don't really like and jump into the next best thing, but you have to ride it out so that you get your new company to a point where you can confidently say, I can live off of this and grow it while also quitting this other thing that I no longer want to do. Yes. I love, love, love that you made that one of your top two tips yeah. because especially, I feel like, especially in the online space, um, you see so many posts like in these different Facebook groups and stuff like that. Like, I quit my job and now I'm traveling the world. And you know, yes. that does happen for some people. I'm not saying it can't ever happen, but you, there are also a lot of people that up and quit their job and then realize like, Oh crap, like I'm not yeah. making enough money and I need to pay my electric bill or my car payment or yep. whatever it is. And mm -hmm. then they end up picking up these odd and end part-time jobs, working at a pizza place or whatever, maybe yeah. a fraction of what they may have been making when they were in their corporate mm. job. But now they're just trying to fill yeah. that, you know, bridge that gap there with their income. Yeah. But it is, I mean, it is hard. You get so excited about your business and you just want to like all the energy you could pour into that. Yes. But it yes. needs to be, there needs to be a plan in place. Um, Absolutely. I don't yeah. think anybody should ever just, I'm just going to quit and what, uh -huh. pay your bills with rainbows yeah. and fairy dust? They won't yeah. accept that as payment. <laughs> exactly. Right. And yeah, online makes it so difficult because we live in a world of instant gratification. So you think yeah. I'm going to start something, I'm going to put it out there and it's going to come back to me right away. Do you know how much competition is out there because of the internet today? Absolutely not. You have to break through so much noise. It's going to take mm -hmm. time and effort. People know when you know what you're talking about. And if you're just tossing it out there, it's not going to come back. So uh, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's one of those long-term games. And if you start yeah. it and it takes off, then quit your job. Who cares? Right. What power do you? Wait <laughs> until that actually happens, you know? Make sure that you have a safety net. You know, that's why yeah. they say even if you have a product or a business idea, still go to college, still go to university because you need a fallback plan. You just, you do. In this day and age, you need that. So yeah, yeah. don't, don't quit your job no matter how much you hate it. Mm -hmm. Use, t think of that as your side hustle to fund your new company. Yes. Like, yes. That is yeah. perfect. I love yeah. it. All right. Let's move on. Tip number dose. Oh Tip my number God. Two. I'm trying to think of what my other tip was. I swear um, I, I do prepared have this. Here if you want you me do? To read it. Okay, yes. wait. I just, I want, it's like, I want to try and remember it myself. <laughs> oh, no, I know what it is. Okay. I know what it is. I got I it. Okay. I won't read okay. it. I won't read it. Okay. So 
kind of on the same lines when you're starting your company and you're super excited and you know your first deal comes in and then deal two and three and, and whatever it may be you need to pick and choose your projects and your clients i know in the beginning it can be very tempting to just pick up anything but that is the absolute worst thing that you can do when I went and started doing this full time. Um, actually, the guy that does all my, he's like kind of like my financial advisor. He's also my mom's boyfriend. Um, he said, yeah, I know. He said, you know, we'll get all of your finances and we'll, you know, cross all the T's, dot all the I's in a little bit. But I need you to just focus on getting the projects and the clients that you're really passionate about. So that's what I started doing. I started almost when I would jump on a call with clients or, or prospects. It was, it was an interview for me and them at the same time. I wanted to make sure that they were just as invested and they were the right kind of client for me. You know, if they had an idea where they wanted to go, then great, let's work together. But I'm not going to build your marketing strategy from the ground up. That's not, that's not what we do. So, like I said, if you're new and you're wanting to get those clients you have to pick and choose. This is why you want to become your own boss anyways, is to work on stuff that you really enjoy and love working for yourself and love walking into your office every day. So if you start taking jobs that you're not excited about or you're just taking it for the money, you might as well just go back to working for a corporate company because that's essentially the same thing. So oh, that's so true. So true. Yeah. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, when you're first starting out, you do get like super like, but this client, I could maybe land this client and I don't know if there will be more. And, but that's now just sucking up your time and your energy on something mm -hmm. that you're not really enjoying. I'm going to look yeah. through, it looks like we have a few comments here. I'm going to, oh. I'm going to look through a minute here. Oh, uh, yes. Gia said, yes, it's their job to convince you. I love that. Sam talking yes. about the job interview and yes. that offerings. Oh, hi, Nikki. Got my hair done today and I <laughs> my hair and she's on. Um, let's see. Whoops. Let's see. Gee, I'm going to see if, I, oh, good. It, sometimes Facebook live won't let me expand people's comments, but thankfully today it's being kind and it could. So Gia said, that's so true. Sadly, we do live in a world which is fixed on instant gratification. It's still good business sense to hold off on going into, yes, going into business full time. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Sure. Um, sure. nobody really ever wants to put themselves at financial risk of, you know, losing your house yeah. or your car or mm -hmm. racking up all this credit card debt. So yes, there's something to be said for having confidence in your business, but you still need to be smart and strategic about how Absolutely. you do it. Yeah. I love it. Well, Sam, thank yeah. you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for and having me. I just, I think we met on Instagram, didn't we? Didn't we? We did. I think you commented on a picture of mine randomly one day and yes. then I went and looked at your profile and then I reached out to say hi. And then I read that article that you wrote online. Yes. Yes. So it's been, yeah, it was a random interaction a few it months ago. Yeah. See, the internet can be a beautiful thing. Just so yes. everybody knows. You yes. can meet real people. Yeah. Um, whoever you do follow on social media, they are a real person. On they the are a real person. Yeah. And it can lead to super amazing, awesome conversations like this. So thank you, yeah. Instagram. <laughs> Well, thank you again for joining. It was so great to have you on. I will get the description updated soon. Perfect. Oh, is there, um, it's just the first five people that tag and share. Is there any expiration? Mm -hmm. to, do they need to tag and share it tonight for the deal to be valid or just the first five people? I would say just the first five people. It's okay. I, I'm not going to give it an expiration date whenever people get, a, you know, get around to it or whatever, but just be sure that, you know, you're, you then have to go over to my social media and actually reach out to me. So all of yes. my, all of my social channels and my website, I assume will be yes, all in there. They'll so all be, yep, they'll all be whatever, right in the description. Yeah, whatever is most convenient for people. You can reach out on Facebook, Instagram, my website, whatever works best. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you, Sam. This was so yes, great to have you on. You. I appreciate it. Yes, have a great rest so of your night. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.